Hi, this is Angel Jones. I love great conversations where life's journey is communicated not only through words, but tones and emotions. Explosive expressions that allow you to feel what they felt and learned. A fool learns only from his own mistake, while the wise learn from their own and from those others have made. Thanks for being here with us. Kita Deming. Kita is a PhD candidate at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. His interests include strategy, resilience, systems, and design thinking. It was really a grand opportunity to have a conversation with Kita. Listening. Good morning, good morning, Kita. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Great to have you on. Um, where are you this morning? I'm in Toronto. Sunny Toronto, actually. Okay. <laughs> sunny Toronto. Beautiful. Without further ado, tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us meeting? I think it's my talent for creating um, educational spaces that imbue an innovation mindset into participants. Hmm. So I think my talent for working with organizations and people around how do you bring an innovation mindset to organizations i think that's kind of that's how we got to be friends today wonderful and being friends are great you know who did you learn this skill from i kind of acquired this skill um through various experiences i've had along the way so i've had a, a lot of mentors and people have always put me in positions to develop training workshops etc and I've seen that I've had an eye fit and I've been doing this since I was 13 in camp counselors and camping and, you know, those that kind of environment. And people were like, you should do leadership training. Hmm. So ever since that, I loved it and I've kept doing it. So I've been facilitating for, God, like 15 years maybe. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Why will you continue to repeat this skill? Um... I think education done right can be extremely transformative in people's lives. So with the right kind of education, people can move from average performers to being peak performers. Um, but sometimes it's just that they just need a tweak. Yeah. Um, so I believe every everybody needs a mentor. Nobody who thrives doesn't have a coach or a mentor. And... Um, Educational spaces are just one way of doing that, one way of setting your brain af- afire in a way that you may not have seen before. So all my workshops are designed to provide insight in a particular way. Hmm. Amazing audience. I totally endorse that. You know, I really saw growth when I used or um, utilized a coach I, I really thought you could do it by yourself, you know, but a coach really brings that that think, element, yes. The gym the gym I go to has the hashtag in this together right now. And I think at my first company I have a setup was called Village Seed Solutions, which was going on that whole um it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. And that philosophy is sort of I think the future of technology, the future of work environments. If you look at the rise of the shared economy, things like Uber, um, things like Airbnb, Mm. the shared economy is booming. So to think that we're living in a world of individualism, I'm sorry, (laughs) the world is moving to a world of collaboration and cooperation and we have to figure out how to do it. Yeah. And I mean, we're seeing it here right now, you know, you are sharing a conversation here and the world is able to access it and access the wisdom that is shared, you know, from your experiences. So it's, it's really amazing. Yeah. Podcasts are a real amazing way of democratizing knowledge and education and wisdom, um, which is why I enjoy being on podcast or listening to podcasts. Actually, first time on a podcast. Oh, it's our pleasure, man. It's our pleasure to be your first. (laughs) So what is one thing you've done consistently over the past three years? Keep it curious. Um, I think knowledge is powerful. So I listened to a quote today where somebody said, um, they told us that, Education was a key, but they keep changing the lock. Hmm. 
Um, and that was speaking towards sort of marginalized youth who are told to go and get an education degree and then that's your way out of, that's your way of social mobility. But the world is always changing. So even if the system may be stacked against you, knowing how to play that game and knowing how to work the rules of that system in your favor can never stay you wrong. So being that person and doing that in terms of learning, how does that make you feel? Make me feel? I think um, learning gives me an energy. So whenever I learn something, I'm always thinking about, okay, how do I teach this to somebody? So I like reading books, and I know a lot of people don't like reading books, and the stats say most people don't finish books. I love reading books. So the first thing I do when I finish a book is like, okay, how can I turn this into a workshop? And that really excites me because I think often people take knowledge and hoard it for themselves. But I'm quite the opposite. I want to read stuff, get, get it out there, and the more I can learn from you, the more we can learn from each other because I don't think this is a finite pie. Like knowledge is just like it's infinite. We can keep sharing and we can keep learning and it's only through associative thinking and only through collaborating and us sharing ideas we're going to get innovation to happen so why would you suggest that someone do what you've done where it uh, where learning is concerned i would never suggest somebody do what i do i think people need to do what they love so i i can't impose i would never impose hey do what i did that i just don't think that works i think people need to find that thing that drives them find their curiosity, their curiosity spark, and go for that, and just give that their all. So, my friend, enter into the time machine with me. Yeah. What is your earliest childhood memory? Man, um, <laughs> I, think, I think I have to go with um, my grandfather and I used to make custard together. And he would always introduce it like, Kita, you want to make some coffee? And I'm like, no, granddad, coffee is disgusting. You want to make tea? No, I don't like tea. Okay, let's make custard. And I'm, he and I would make custard. And we had this ritual together. Mm. And we did that almost every every other Sunday for for almost 19 years of my life, probably. Wow. Maybe less, sorry, 17 years of my life, 17 or 18 years of my life. But um, when he passed away, I've never made I've never made custard to this day. Wow! Um, just because the memory is so associated with him, so I think th- that memory is a memory that was repeated weekly, as that I like I can remember. It's probably is the most powerful memory, and we've had time to do that. But I think why that memory sticks out is because there was so much ritual in relationship. So and it was more than just my grandfather and I making custard. It was my grandfather and I cooperating. It was my grandfather teaching me something. It was him and I talking. It was me hearing his stories of how he grew up, how he took a ship from the Caribbean to England. Oh, really? To pick it. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's people. So, for example, people look at very mundane tasks like making custard and forget all about the social stuff and the social beautiful social pieces that are happening behind that and not realizing that what my grandfather and I were doing in making custard was connecting Mm -hmm. and that's the essence of human society we want to connect with people in meaningful ways and my grandfather's that experience repeated is probably the most powerful memory that i have for sure and i think it's grounded who i am today so my friend declaration yes or no or a bit more have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to no are you married yes do you have children no do you believe in god maybe your favorite song when you were 12 years old um Crisscross, I'm making you want to jump. Jump, 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 jump. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day or three hours a week? No, neither. I watch very little TV unless I'm binging. Wonderful. Sit.
Kita, in closing, is there anything you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Um, just keep it curious. Um, I mean, I love the mind, the educational spaces that where we're talking about setting an innovation mindset. Um, other than that, I just want to connect with other amazing folks who are interested in making the world a better place. Um, so I hope you enjoy the, the podcast and I wish you all the success. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Great, great. My pleasure, man. A pleasure I treasure. Thank you for being on 12-Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Hi, Angel here. I have had the opportunity to speak with some amazing individuals. A lot of these individuals connected with me and I connected with them because of a path that I chose. And that was the path of becoming financially free. I became debt-free. And now, if you require my assistance to become debt-free and then build wealth, check me out or email me at hope at angeljones.com. That is hope at angeljones.com. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.